everybody. Uh, tonight's video is going to be on intercepts and symmetry of graphs. We've already talked about intercepts of graphs and how to find them uh, just by looking at the graph. Uh, if you remember, they are where the graph crosses the x-axis or the y-axis. But tonight we're going to think about finding these intercepts algebraically. So in order to do that, we want to think back on what those points are where they cross the axis. So what are the coordinates of those points? So if a point is actually on the x-axis or is an x-intercept, then the y-value or the y-coordinate of that point is going to be zero. When the points are on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is zero. So if we want to solve this algebraically to find the intercepts, we're going to let y equal 0 to find the x-intercepts and solve the equation for x. And then to find the y-intercepts, we'll let x equal 0 and solve for y. So let's do an example of this. So let's say find the intercepts. And we'll do an easy one to start. Of y equals 3x minus 9. Okay, so I'm just going to do these two different steps to find the intercepts. So first, I got to do them separately. So first thing I'm going to do is to find the x-intercepts. So the x-intercept, or intercepts, we'll see how many we have, um, is where y equals 0. And now I just have to solve for x. So I replaced the y with a 0. I should only have x's left, and so now I just solve for x. So I'll add 9 to each side, and I'll get 9 equals 3x, divide by 3, and x equals 3. Okay, so that's the x-intercept. So if you want to think of that as x equals 3, that's the value on the x-axis where this graph will cross at 3. Or you can think of that as a point with the coordinates 3, 0, right? We already know that the y coordinate is 0 because it's the x-intercept and this is just determining what the x value of the coordinate is so it's 3, 0. So that's, you can either just go straight from x equals 3 and plot that point or you can think of it as an ordered pair. So to find the y-intercepts we are going to um, do a similar process and we're going to say y equals 3 times 0 minus 9. So we're replacing x with 0 and solving for y. So y equals 0 minus 9, or in other words, negative 9. So that gives us the ordered pair of 0, negative 9, because we know the x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is negative 9. Okay, I want you to try an example on your own. So find the intercepts of the equation 4x squared plus y equals 4. And so you're going to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts for this. I will give you a hint. I will say that there are two x-intercepts and only one y-intercept. So pause the video, try this example on your own, and then you can restart the video and I will show you the solution from there. So you can pause it now. So to find the x-intercepts, we're just going to do the same process as we did above and we are going to say 4x squared plus 0 equals 4. So I let y equal 0, now I'm going to solve for x. So 4x squared equals 4. We're going to divide both sides by 4. And so we have x squared equals 1. Um, let me grab it. That didn't work. Um, hang on. So x squared equals 1. We're going to take the square root of each side. And x equals positive or negative 1. So when I'm taking the square root of this side, I want to take both the positive and negative square root. I know I should get two answers because this is a squared um, or quadratic equation. So x equals plus or minus 1. So thinking of that in terms of the intercepts, that's going to be 
the coordinate negative 1, 0, and 1, 0. So those are the two points on the x-axis where this parabola is going to cross. For the y-intercepts, we have 4 times 0 squared plus y equals 4. So that's 0 plus y, which is y equals 4. So that's the point 0, 4. So those are the x-intercepts, and that's the y-intercept for this graph. Okay, the next concept we're going to talk about is a graph being symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, or the origin. So if you were to graph the two uh, previous equations that we just did examples of, first one's a line, and you wouldn't really see any symmetry there. But the second one was a parabola, and we know parabolas are usually symmetric to the y-axis unless they're uh, moved around somewhere else on the coordinate plane, um, which we'll talk about much later. Um, but usually we see some sense of symmetry there. And so any graph can be symmetric to these three parts of the coordinate plane, the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin. So if a, if a graph is symmetric to the x-axis, there's a way to describe that. We'll say if x, y is on the graph, so if there is some point uh, x, y on this graph, then if the graph is symmetric to the x-axis, which is um, going to be whatever is above the x-axis will be below it. So if you think about that, what's happening to the y-coordinates, they're all switching, right? So if I have this point up here that, let's call this xy, doesn't specifically have to worry about the coordinates, but if I want, if this graph is going to be symmetric to the x-axis here, then the point that is the mirror image will be down here. The x-coordinate will be the same, but the y-coordinate will be opposite. So if this point x, y is on the graph, then x and the opposite of y is on the graph. Okay, so that's what it would be if it was symmetric to the x-axis. Similarly, if we're talking about the y-axis, if I have this point here, we'll call this one x, y, then what's going to happen? The mirror image is going to be the opposite value of x and the y value stays the same. So if, again, if x, y is on the graph, and if it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, we would say then negative x or the opposite of x comma y is on the graph. And if it's symmetric with respect to the origin, then if we have this point here, we'll call it x, y, its mirror image needs to go through the origin. And another way to think of these, um, sym the symmetric points for all of these, is to draw a straight line to what it's being symmetric to and then draw another line in the opposite direction. So with the uh, symmetric to the x-axis, I'm just drawing a straight line down. And here I was down 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So now I'm going to go in the opposite direction, 4 units. I may, think may have gone a little farther. Um, or with this one, I'm drawing a straight line to the y-axis, 1 unit, and then a straight line again, 1 unit. With the origin, I'm drawing this straight line to the origin, and then I'm going to continue a straight line in the opposite direction, the same number of units. And so what has happened? The x-coordinate is now changed, so it's the opposite, and the y-coordinate has also changed. So if something's symmetric to the origin, if x, y is on the graph, then the opposite of x and opposite of y is on the graph. Okay, so those are the three different like scenarios or ways that you can see if a point is or if a graph is symmetric to these.
different parts, the x-axis, y-axis origin. So if I wanted to find a point, or for each point, find a point that is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, and origin. So whatever my point is, whatever x, y is, if it's symmetric to the x-axis, then I know that I have it where the y-coordinates have flipped. If it's symmetric to the y-axis, that means the x-coordinate has flipped. And if it's symmetric to the origin, then they have both changed. So let's do an example. Let's take the point 3, 4. If, three, four, if the point 3, 4 is on a graph that is symmetric to the x-axis, then the point 3, negative 4 is also on there, right? Because I've just changed the y-coordinate. I've flipped the y-coordinate. I've taken the opposite value. If it's symmetric to the y-axis, all we have to do is take the opposite of the x-coordinate. So 3, 4 would be, negative 3, 4 would be on a graph with 3, 4 if it's symmetric to the y-axis. And then on a separate graph, if that was symmetric to the origin, the point negative 3, negative 4 would be on it. What happens if, for example, I take the point negative 2, 1? So if I'm looking at something symmetric to the x-axis, remember the y value is we're taking the opposite. So negative 2, negative 1. If it's symmetric to the y-axis, we're taking the opposite of the x-coordinate. So my x-coordinate is negative 2 to begin with. So the opposite of negative 2 is 2. So 2, 1 is a point that is symmetric with respect to the y-axis to negative 2, 1. And then for being symmetric with respect to the origin, we're taking the opposite of both. So that would be the opposite of negative 2, which is 2 and the opposite of 1, which is negative 1. So that's how I would be able to find a point that is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, or origin, given another point already on the line. So um, that is all we have for our talk about um, intercepts and symmetry. We'll do a couple examples in class where You'll be given an equation, and you'll have to determine if the equation um, models something that is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, or origin. We'll do an example of that in class. So bring these notes with you tomorrow, and I will see you then.